Hey, it's Derek from Mix96 with another edition of Derek's Good Deeds powered by JustServe.org. Today, we are at Weave, when everyone acts, violence ends. The purpose of Weave in the Sacramento community is to bring awareness and counseling and many other services to victims of domestic abuse sexual abuse and assault, and also sex trafficking. We're gonna to talk to our friends at Weave today and find out what they're doing in the community to help those victims and in the midst of a pandemic. Come with us. So are you moving in this facility, like from one floor to another? What's happening at Weave? We own the building okay. and we've owned it since 1994 and forever our client services were upstairs and we just didn't have a vision for how we could move things downstairs and make them more accessible and this really kind of brought it to a head because our counseling rooms are tiny mm -hmm. we just really want to be able to keep clients downstairs staff upstairs sure. and not be mixing airspace so we're working with a design company to do branding and come up with artwork that'll be really welcoming for survivors mm -hmm. and you know, make this a, a nice space to walk into sure. to feel safe. And then um, this is our recep new reception area. And one thing that's really important for client safety is that if somebody's receiving direct services, they can be buzzed into a private waiting room sure. rather than you know mixing and mingling with folks who might be here as a vendor or, sure. or So they have else. privacy and they're able to... Exactly. So everything's open and ADA and all of that good stuff. So here's where a client would wait while they're waiting for services. Now how hard has it been being able to provide service to your clients, be able to help? Have you, have you had to adjust the way you do it virtually? How, how have you guys adapted? We have. Um, for counseling, it's really interesting. Um, we've served more people through our counseling program this year than we did in the same time period last year because wow. Frankly, virtual counseling is working pretty well for people who maybe live far away from sure. where we offer services. Um, also, you know, the, there are fewer no-shows because you know somebody couldn't get childcare or didn't have transportation, that sure. kind of a thing. Um, we use a platform called Doxy, which is like a HIPAA compliant, super safe version of Zoom, got basically. It, it. Well, it makes sense with that kind of information right. being exchanged across right. you know, broadband. Legal right. services have been challenging because the courts were shut down for so long. Yes. So we had a yeah. lot of people who were, you know, very far along in their child custody case or their dissolution of their marriage or... Right. And um, obviously the court system is an integral part of what you do and absolutely. Uh, that creates just another impedance. So we're really concerned with COVID that a lot of people who kind of had just been staying in place and, you know, sure. hoping for the bath. Right. Um, do you have an expected reopening date to uh, receive clients physically? You know, we're really keying off of what the state is saying. I mean, once they feel like it's it's safe for people to be doing things inside, like, you know, restaurants are open inside and that kind of a thing, we're going to feel a lot more comfortable bringing people into this building. We are taking people into our residential services because we're able to put, put them in a quarantine area mm -hmm. for two weeks and then move them in with the rest of the population. So. So we've resumed that. So, you know, it's really case by case, you know. So this is a typical counseling room. You can see that it's very large. Our old counseling rooms did not allow for six feet um, space between the therapist and the client. So that was one big impetus for moving down here where we had more space. So more, count, more rooms where we'll see clients, whether um, for therapeutic counseling or case management. You know, we have, we have folks that are um, leaving a life of human trafficking. We have people who um, are here because they were sexually assaulted or for domestic violence. And, you know, we also work with people who have financial abuse, so we're helping them understand their credit and sure. figure out how to dig themselves out of a financial hole so that they can move on. Sure. So I think people think domestic violence, they think being physically injured. Which and, is a huge part of it. Which is a huge part of it, but yes. for, for the vast majority of the people we serve, there's more emotional abuse, sure. financial abuse, sure. spiritual abuse, and other things mm -hmm. that that are more hidden and, and a lot of people think, oh, well, that doesn't count as domestic violence, so maybe there is no help for me. You know, in a society, in our community here in Sacramento, you know that we have to start here in our hometown and we can't brush things under the rug. Right. And we got to face them head on and you guys are doing just that. I mean, like head on, face to face, you're in the trenches. <laughs> doing everything you can to assist people and give them hope and we appreciate everything you do for the people. Well, and I appreciate you lifting up the voices of the people that we serve because people people need to hear the stories and understand the complexity of the problem. It's our pleasure. Thank, Thank you so, so much. much. Community.
If you want to help motivate service in the community with Weave, you can go to weaveinc.org. They have an opportunity for you to donate money or also a wish list for items to be donated to Weave. Find out more there or go to justserve.org so you can motivate service in the Sacramento community. Another edition of Derek's Good Deeds with Mix 96.